<laughs> Ashley Brock reading Nora Roberts' book, Rising Tides, Chapter 20. And it's emotional too. <laughs> I forgot about it at the beginning. It's emotional, and then it's it, then it's cutesy, and then it's sweet. So it's 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 still emotional. Grace intended to cool off and calm down before she stopped by her parents' house to pick up Aubrey. When she was this emotional, cheered up, there was no hiding it from anyone, much less from a mother or a very perceptive child. The last thing she wanted was questions. The last thing she felt capable of giving was explanations. She said what needed to be said and done what needed to be done, and she refused to feel sorry for it. The man losing a long-standing friendship, one that she had always treasured, it couldn't be helped. Someone she... Somehow she needs him would manage to be adult enough to be polite when in public and not to drag anyone else into their battles. It certainly wouldn't be an easy or happy situation, but it could work. The same arrangement had worked for three years with her father, hadn't it? She drove around for twenty minutes until her fingers were no longer gripping the wheel like a vice, and the reflection of her face in the rearview mirror was no longer capable of frightening children and small dogs. She showed herself that she was now perfectly under control, so under control that she thought she'd take Aubrey out to McDonald's for a treat. And on her very next evening off, she was taking them both to Oxford for the fireman's carnival. She certainly wasn't going to stay around the house moping. She didn't slam the door of her car, which she felt was an excellent sign of her now placid mood. Nor did she stomp up the steps of her parents' tidy colonial. She even paused for a moment to admire the pale purple patinio spilling out of the hanging planter near the picture window. It was just bad luck and bad timing that her gaze shifted a few inches past the blooms, and that she spotted her father through that picture window, lounging in his granter like a king on his throne. Temper gestured and blasted her through the door like a sharp edge pebbled with from well aimed slingshot. I have a few things to say to you. She let the door slam at her back, marched up where Pete rested his feet. I've been saving them up. He googled at her for a few seconds. Took him it took for him to arrange his face. If you want to speak to me, you'll do it in a civilized tone of voice. I through being civilized, I've been civilized up to here. She made a sharp splashing motion with her hand. Grace Grace, she flushed, even Hughes. Carl hustled from the kitchen with Aubrey on him. What's getting into you? You upset the baby. Take Aubrey back in the kitchen, Mama, and it won't traumatize her for life to hear her mother raise her voice. As if to prove the argument was inevitable, Aubrey threw back her head and set up a wail. Grace stippled the urge to grab her, run out of the house with her, and smother her face with kisses until the tears stopped. Instead, she from Aubrey, stop that now. I'm not mad at you. Go on in the kitchen with Grandma and have some juice. Jeff Aubrey sobbed it at the top of her lungs, dragging away from Carol with her arms head out to Grace and fat tears trembling on her cheeks. Carol took the child in the kitchen and calmed her down. Pete clamped down the exact urge as Grace's and waved a hand at his wife impatiently. Child hasn't Child hasn't shed a tear all day. He met her with an accusing look at Grace. Well she's shedding them now, Grace snapped back, adding layers of guilt on the frustration as Abby's Arby's Aubrey's sobs echoed back from the kitchen. And she'll forget them in five minutes after they dry. That's the beauty of being too. You get older, you don't forget tears as easily. You made me cry plenty of them. You don't get through parenthood without causing some tears. But some people can get through it without ever knowing the child they raised. You never looked at me and saw what I was. Pete wished he was standing. He wished he had shoes on his feet. A man was a distant a disadvantage when he was kicked back in a trotter without his damn shoes on. I don't know what you're talking about. Or maybe you did. Maybe I'm wrong about that. You looked, you saw, and you put it aside because it didn't fit in with what you wanted. You knew, she continued in a low voice, that nonetheless snapped with fear. You knew I wanted to be a dancer. You knew I dreamed of it. And you let me go right on. Oh, taking the lessons was fine with you. Maybe you grumbled about the cost of them from time to time, but you paid for them. And a pretty penny it came over, came to be over all those years. For what, Daddy? He blinked. No one had called Daddy in nearly three years, and it pitched out his heart. Because you were set on having them. What was the point if you were never going to believe me? Believe in me? Never going to let go enough or stand by enough to let me try to take the next step? This is old business, Grace. You were too young to go to New York, and it was just foolishness. I was young, but not too young. And if it was foolishness, it was my foolishness. I never knew if I was good enough. I'll never know if I could have made that dream real, because when I asked you to help me reach for it, you told me I was too old for nonsense. Too old for nonsense, she repeated, but too young to be trusted. 
I did trust you. He jerked his, he jerked his chair up. And look what happened. Yes, look what happened. Got myself pregnant. So now you put it at the time like it was something I managed all by myself just to annoy you. Jack Casey was no damn good. I knew it for the first time I laid eyes on him. So you said over and over again until it took on the glimmer of forbidden fruit and I couldn't resist sampling it. Now Pete's eyes fled. Rizal, you blaming me for getting yourself in the room? No, I'm not to blame. No, I'm to blame if there hasn't to be blame. And I won't make excuses, but I'll tell you this. It wasn't nearly as bad as you made him out to be. Left you high and dry, didn't he? So did you, Daddy. His hands shot up, shocking both of them and didn't connect. And trembled as he lowered it. Never done more than paddle her bottom when she was a toddler. And even then he suffered more than she had because... If you hit me, she said, struggling to keep her voice low. It'd be the first real feeling you've shown me since I came to you. And Mama told you I was pregnant. I knew you'd be angry and hurt and disappointed. I was so scared. But as bad as I thought it would be, it was worse. Because you didn't stand by me. Second time, Daddy. Most important of all, any words here for me? A man's daughter comes in and tells him she's pregnant, that she's gone on and been with a man he took trouble to warn her away from him, take some time to deal with it. You were ashamed of me. You were angry, thinking of what that neighbors were going to say. Instead of looking at me, seeing that I was scared, all he saw was that I made a mistake and you were going to have to live with it. She turned away, so she was absolutely sure there wouldn't be tears. Albert, it's not a mistake. She's a gift. I couldn't love her any more than I do. Or me any less. That's not true. He'd be out of sick inside. More than a little scared. That's just not true. You step back when I married Jack. Step back from me. It is some stepping back yourself. Maybe. She turned around. I tried to make it once without you putting my money away for New York. I couldn't do it on my own. I was going to make my marriage work without any help. I couldn't do that either. All I left was the baby inside me. I was going to fail there, too. You never even came to the hospital when I had her. I did. Groping, he picked up a magazine from the table, rolled it into a tube. I went up, looked at her through the glass. She looked just like you did. Long legs, long fingers, and as much yellow fuzz on her head. I went and looked in your room. You were asleep. Couldn't go in. Didn't know what to say. Do you? You unrolled the magazine, found a fresh face model in the cover, then dropped it back on the table. Guess it made me mad all over again. You had a baby. You didn't have a husband. Didn't know what to do about it. I've got a strong beliefs about that kind of thing. It's hard to bend. Didn't need you to bend very much. I kept waiting for you to give me the chance to. That when the son of a bitch ran out on you, figured out you needed some help and come home. So you could have told me how right you were about it, everything. Something flicked her in his eyes that made it be so. That might have been so. I guess I deserved that. I guess that's what I've done. He sat down again. And damn it. I was right. She gave a half laugh, weary, and around the edges. Funny how the men I love are always so damn right when I'm concerned. Am I what you call delicate woman, Daddy? For the first time in the too long to remember, she saw his eyes left. Hell, girl. About as delicate as a steel rod. That's something, anyway. I always wish you had a little more giving you. Instead of coming once, just once, and asking for help, you're out there cleaning other people's houses, working till all hours in a bar. Not you, too. She probably moved to one. Half the time, if I see you down on the waterfront, you got shadows under your eyes. Of course, the way your mother's jabbering, that will change before long. Explains over some change. Ethan Quinn's not a man. He'll let his wife wear herself to the bone, working two jobs. That's the kind of man you should have been looking all along. Honest, dependable. She laughed again. James Rear. Mama's mistaken. I won't be marrying Ethan. Pete started to speak again, closed his mouth. Smart enough to learn by his mistakes. If he pushed her toward one man, pointing out his flaws, Mama's pushed her away from him. Another by listening to his features. Well, you know your mother. You let it go with that. Trying to find the words in his head. Flicked his knees. I was afraid to let you go to New York. He blurted out and shifted when she turned from the window to stare. I was afraid you wouldn't come back. Afraid to you. get yourself hurt up there. Oh, Gracie, you're only 18 and so damn green. 
knew you were good at dancing. Everybody said so. And you always looked pretty to me. Figured if you got yourself up there and didn't get your head bashed in by some ugger, you'll find you wanted to stay. No, you couldn't manage it unless I gave you the money to start you out. So I didn't. I thought you either stopped wanting to go so damn bad, or if you didn't take you a year or two to put put, put by enough. She said nothing silently. Man works hard all his life building something. While he's doing it, he thinks that someday it'll pass it on to his child. My daddy passed the business on to me, and I always figured I'd pass it on to my son. Had a daughter instead. And that was fine. Never wanted to change that. But you never wanted what I was planning on giving you. Oh, you'd work. You were always a good worker. But anybody could see you were the only doing a job. Was well, going to be alive, not your life. I didn't know you felt that way. Didn't matter how I felt, it wasn't for you, that's all. I started to think that you'd get married one day and maybe your husband would come into the business. That way I'd still be passing it on to you and to your children. Then I married Jack and he didn't get your dream either. His hands rested on his knees and he lifted his finger. Maybe Aubrey's have interest in it. I'm not planning on retiring anytime soon. Maybe she will. She's a good girl. He's still looking down at it. Happy. Happy, you. You're a fine mother, Grace. You're doing a pretty good job. You're, do, you're doing a better job than most under hard circumstances. Made a good life for both of you. Done it on your own. Her heart trembled. Thank you. Thank you for that. Uh, your mother would like if you stayed for dinner. <laughs> Finally looked up and now the matters were cool. For a distance in them were both pleading and apologizing. <laughs> I'd like it to. So would I. And she simply walked over, climbed into her lap, buried her face, and said, Oh, Daddy, I missed you. I missed you, Gracie. Began to rock and weep. I missed you, too. He then sat on the top step of Gracie's front porch and put her purse down beside him. He had to admit, he'd been tempted several times to open it and poke inside and see just what a woman caught around with her that was so damn heavy and so indispensable. But so far, he'd managed to resist. Now he wondered where she could be. He'd driven by her house nearly two hours earlier before going to the boatyard. Since her car wasn't in the drive, he didn't stop. Odds were her door was unlocked, and he could have set her purse inside the living room. That wouldn't have accomplished anything. He'd done some hard thinking while he worked. <laughs> some of that thinking centered on how long it was going to take her to cool off from snarling mad to mildly irritated. He figured he could deal with mildly irritated. He decided it was probably best that she wasn't home quite yet. He gave them both more time to settle down. Got it all figured out yet? He decided. He smiled his father before he heard him. Before he saw him sitting comfortably on the steps, feet crossed at the angles. It was the salted peanuts in the bag Ray had on his lap. He had always had a fondness for salted peanuts. Not exactly. Can't seem to think it through, so it gets clear. <clears throat> Sometimes you have to go with the gut instead of the head. You've got good instincts, Ethan. <laughs> Falling instincts is what got me into this. If I hadn't touched her in the first place. If you haven't touched her in the first place, you have denied both of you something a lot of people look for all their lives is number five. Mary rattled into the bag, pulled out a handful of nuts. Well, I regret something that rare and that precious. I heard her. I knew I would. That's where you went wrong. Not taking love when it was offered, but it... Not trusting it for the long haul. It disappointed me, Ethan. It was a slap. The kind of both knew would sting the most. Because it did, Ethan stared at the thirsty little pansies going laying besides. I tried to do what I thought was right. For whom? For a woman who wanted to share your life? Wherever that would take you? For the children you may or may not have? You're on dangerous ground when you second guess God. The annoyed Ethan slid in there and looked at his mind. Is there? Is there what? Is there God? Figure you ought to know. Seeing as you've been dead the last few months. Spectre <laughs> back, he said. Let out a woeful roll in there. Ethan, I've always appreciated you. Your understated wit. And I wish I could discuss the mysteries of the universe with you. But time's passing. Munching on nuts. He studied Ethan's face as he did raise wickedly. Amused grin softened woman. Watching you grow into man was one of the greatest pleasures of my life. You got heart as big as your bay. I hope you'll trust it. I want you to be happy. There'll be trouble coming for all of you. It says he'll need his family. All his family. Ray added and murmured and she said, There's too much misery in the short time we spend living, Ethan. Do you turn away happiness? To turn away happiness, you remember the value of your joys? Then his eyes went, 
I braced myself, son. You're thinking time's over. I braced myself, son. You're thinking time's over. He's in her grace's car. He toward the road. He knew without looking what his father was no longer beside him. When Grace saw Ethan sat on the front porch steps, she wanted to lay her head on the steering wheel. She wasn't sure her heart could handle yet another trip through an emotional ringer. Instead, she climbed out of the car and went around to unstrap the sleeping Aubrey from her car. When Aubrey's head heavy on her shoulder, she walked to the house and watched Ethan unfold his long legs and rise. I'm not willing to go for another time with you, Ethan. I brought you your purse by. You lifted at the house. Startled, she found when he got it out to her. So just tell John, but her might have been that she hadn't even realized she'd been without. It. Thank you. I need to talk to you, Grace. I'm sorry, I have to put up your bed. I'll wait. I said I'm not willing to talk about this again. I said I need to talk to you. I'll wait. Then you can just wait till I'm good and ready. She told him to stand with the house. Appeared she hadn't quite got down to Marley irritated. He decided, but he sat again. And he waited. She took her time, stripping off her down to her trading pants, covering her with a soft sheet, tied in the bedroom. She went to the kitchen and poured herself a glass of lemonade she didn't want, but she drank every drop of it. She could see him through the screen door, sitting on the steps. For a moment, she considered simply going to the door, closing it, and tossing the bolt to make her point. But she discovered she didn't have quite enough mad left to be that petty. She opened the screen door and let it close quietly. Is she down for the night? Yes, she's had a long day, so have I. I hope this won't take long. I guess it doesn't have to. I want to tell you I'm sorry for hurting you, for making you unhappy. Since she didn't come down to join him on the steps, he stood and turned to her. I went about it wrong, and I wasn't honest with you. I should have been. I don't doubt you're sorry, Ethan. She walked to the rail, leaned out, looked over her little patch of yard. I don't know if we can be friends the way we were before. I know it's hard to be at odds with someone you care about. I made up with my father tonight. Did you? He stepped forward and sat. Stop because she shifted away just a little, just enough to tell him he no longer had the right to her. I'm glad. I suppose I have you to thank for it. If I hadn't been so mad at you, I wouldn't have let myself be mad at him and get it out. I'm grateful for you for that. I appreciate your apology. Now I'm tired of You said a lot of things to me today. She wasn't going to brush him off until he's finished. Yes, I did. Shifted again, medication. Some of it was right, but not all of it. Not acting on how I felt about you before. It's the way it had to be. Because you say so. Because you couldn't have been more than 14 when I started loving you and wanting you. I was close to eight years older. I was mad when you were still a girl. It would have been wrong to touch you then. Maybe I waited too long. He stopped, shook his head. I did wait too long. But I had time to think. He threw, and I promised myself I wouldn't get you tangled up with me. You were the only one who I wanted enough that it mattered. Part of it was for me because I knew if I ever had you, I wouldn't want to let you go. And you already decided that you would. I decided that I was going to live my life pretty much alone. I was managed that well enough until recently. See it as a noble sacrifice. I see it as ignorance. She lifted her hands, knowing she was eating up again. I guess we better leave it at that. You know damn well that if we'd get married, you'd want more children. Yes, I would. And while I'll never agree with you recently for not making them together, there are other ways to make a family. You of all people should know. We could have adopted children. He said, you, I figured you'd want to get pregnant. He figured right, I'd want it because I want, I would treasure your child up and inside me, and knowing you were there with us. But that doesn't mean I couldn't find another way. What if I couldn't have children, Ethan? What if we were in love and planned to be married and we found out I couldn't have babies? Would you stop loving me because of it? Would you tell me you couldn't marry me? No, of course not. That's, that's not love, she finished. But it's not a matter of can't, it's a matter of won't. And I could have tried to understand your feelings if you hadn't kept them from me. If you hadn't turned me away when all I wanted was to help you. And I won't compromise on everything. I won't be with a man who doesn't respect my feelings and who won't share his problems with me. I won't be with a man who doesn't love me enough to stay, to make a promise to me, to grow old with me, to be a father to my child. And I won't spend my life having an affair with you than having to explain to my daughter why you didn't love and respect me enough to marry me. She stepped toward the door. Don't. Shut his eyes. Find him. Don't turn you away from me, Grace. <laughs> I'm not doing the turning away. Don't you see, Ethan? You've been doing the turning away all along. I've ended up right back where I started. Looking at you. Needing you. I'm never going to be able to stop now. I made so many promises to myself about you. Kept breaking them. I let her, I let her put her hands on this, too. <laughs> he says, I let her put a mark on what we've had. I want to clear that mark away. If you give me a chance. He lifted, 
He'll do shoulders. I've been doing some thinking. She nearly smiled. Well, there's the news. Do you want to hear what I've been thinking now? By all instinct, listening to his heart, he started up. I'm thinking it's always been you, Grace. And only you. It's always going to be you. And only you. I can't help it if I want to take care of you. Doesn't mean I think you're weak. It's only because you're precious to me. Ethan, you'd make her give in. She'd do it. Don't. I'm thinking I'm not going to be able to give you a chance to live without me after all. He took her hands, holding them when she tried to tug them free. Kept his eyes on hers. Drew her out and down the steps to get to the last glimmer and loud to say something. I'll never let you down, he told her. I'll never stop needing you to stand beside me. You make me happy, Grace. I haven't val valued that enough, but I will from now on. I love you. He touched his lips to her bro when she trembled. The sun's setting. He said that was the best time for daydream. Maybe it's the best time to pick the dream you want to hold on to. I want to hold on to this one. I need you to look at me. He said softly and lifted her face. Will you marry me? Joy and hope blossomed with Ethan. No one answered yet, but he'd seen the answer, and overcome with gratitude, he bought her hands to his lips. Will you give Aubrey to me? Let me give her my name. Let me be her father. Tears began to swim in her eyes. She willed them back. She wanted to see him clearly. She stood watching her with his face so serious, lit by the last quiet light of the day. You know, not yet. He murmured, and this time touched his lips. There's one more. We have children with me, Grace. She saw the tears she'd been struggling to hold back, spill over and wander that he could ever have thought to deny them both that joy, that right, that promise. Make a life with me, one that comes from love, one that I can watch grow in you. Only a fool would believe that what comes from what we have together would be anything but beautiful. She framed his face with her hands, took that picture in her heart. For an answer, I'll need to know that this is what you want, not just for me, but for yourself. I want a family. I want to build what my parents built. I need to build it with you. Her lips curse up. I'll marry you, Ethan. I'll give you my daughter. I'll make children with you. We'll take care of each other. Drew her clothes just to hold. While well, the sun slipped away and the lights shimmered into evening, her heart beat quick and lied against his. Her single quiet sigh echoed seconds before the whippoorwill began to sing in the plum tree next door. I was afraid you weren't going to be able to forgive me. <laughs> so was I. And I figured hell she loves me, too. I can get around her. The laugh rumbled out as he nuzzled her. You're not the only one who can reel somebody in like a damn rockfish. Took you long enough to pay the hook. If you take your time about things, you end up with the best at the end of the day. Buried his face in her hair, wanting to sit in the texture. <laughs> now, I've got the best. Good, solid, stoneware. <laughs> laugh at she leaned back so she could see his eyes. The humor there, she thought, was aimed at both of them. You're a smart man, he said. A few hours ago, you said I was stupid. You were. She pressed the noise against him. Now you're smart. I missed you, Grace. She closed her eyes and held tight, thinking it was a day for forgiveness and hope and beginnings. I miss you, Ethan. She sighed and gave the air a buzz. He said, Peanuts? She said it snuggled against him. That's funny. I can say I smell peanuts. I'll explain it to you. Tilt her head up for one small kiss in a little while. End of the book. Makes you want to smack Ethan. And then you're like, Stupid Ethan. Then you love Ethan. But that's the end of the book. Hope you enjoyed.